Some reptiles are super friendly. We're talking puppy dog tame, but what about the reptiles with bad reputations? What are the ones that deserve display enclosures, but maybe never to get touched? Today, we're going over the top five least friendly reptiles. My name's Adam, this is a troublemaker. You're watching Wicked Wicked Reptiles, stick around. I think it's time for a proper introduction to Stevie. This is uh, Stevie, and it turns out that working from home with a new puppy is uh, basically impossible, so she's gonna help me with this one. So the idea for this one isn't to villainize any animals. I think all of these can make great pets for certain people, but there are animals that just generally are more cantankerous, and there are reasons for why, and reasons that that might be changing within the species. So that's enough of a long intro. Let's just get going with number five. Tokay geckos. Now here's the thing with Tokay geckos. I think they actually can be tamed down pretty well uh, in comparison to a lot of other things on the list. And in terms of animals that have a really bad reputation for being super cantankerous, these are the ones that I think it's probably because it was a lot of wild caught imports that just didn't really acclimate very well. Where with the captive bred ones, the ones that are born in captivity, it seems like they do much better. And just, here's a great example. Look at my friend Dion and with his, uh, Reptiliata's great channel if you wanna know more about Tokay geckos, but his are full size adults. Like these are big animals. And that's because they're one of the biggest geckos in the entire world. We're talking about some of these get to 16 inches. Now the females will get smaller than the males. The males do get really, really large and they are beautiful, I'll give you that. And there's a lot of morphs going on with them as well. So if you're looking for something as a display, Tokay geckos are awesome. And they make a really cool sound kind of sounds like they're saying Toke, which is where they got their name, uh, places like Indonesia where they're from. So that's a lot of redeeming qualities. The problem is if they're unsocialized, if you get an animal that you haven't either socialized yourself or wasn't socialized to begin with, they have a very powerful set of jaws and they are not afraid to use them. They are going to bite you and they're gonna hold on and you're gonna bleed and it's gonna be really uncomfortable. Now, I've been bitten a lot this week, Thanks, Stevie. But I'll tell you what, I'd rather get bit by a puppy than a Tokay gecko 10 times out of 10. These things have uh, terrible bites in terms of the size of the animal. Now, I'm kind of overselling it. You're probably not gonna need stitches. It's not gonna kill you. No serious injuries. It just doesn't feel great. And for how beautiful they are, it, maybe it's just best to leave them as a uh, display type animal. Or put in the work like Dion has and socialize yours so they'll come and jump on you to eat insects. Either way, Tokay geckos are awesome, but make sure you know what you're getting yourself into before you get one. Number four, I've called them Satan sausages before, blood pythons. Now, blood pythons and short tail pythons, which are related, very closely related. In fact, blood pythons didn't get their own species until 2001. Okay, that's enough of that. Uh, these guys are known for being quite cantankerous. If you ask anybody who's been in reptiles for a while, who has the stereotypes kind of embedded in their brains, and you ask them, what is the most cantankerous snake? They might tell you a blood python because they're little pistols. And by little, I mean big. They're kind of similarly related to ball pythons in a way. They can hybridize. That was adorable. But regardless, a uh, similar shape, but thicker. They're only gonna get four, five, six feet, usually around four, four and a half feet is pretty common, but they get really thick. We're talking about sometimes 20, 25, I've even heard 30 pounds maybe an obese animal at that point, but what I'm saying is they're much thicker body than a ball python, which is going to get maybe around the same length, but they're never gonna to get to 30 pounds. If you get a ball python that's 30 pounds, you got problems. What do you think? You seem very interested. Now, I think this is one of the most beautiful species of python in the entire world, naturally, just the way that they look. But the reason I don't have one is just that attitude. And I think maybe I'm a victim of stereotypes from the internet, because from what I understand from people like the Brian Cuscos of the world, who actually will breed this type of snake, they can be tamed down as babies, especially captive born. Because back in the day, basically all you had available were animals that were shipped in. So I think that this is a common theme the more generations of captive breeding for a lot of snakes and a lot of species of, of lizards and things like that, 
it seems like they calm down more. And maybe that's just because people will start taming them down, start interacting with them at a younger age. I don't know exactly the, the science behind it, but it definitely seems like that is the case. The more generations in captivity, the more docile the animal. So if you're looking to get yourself a Borneo short-tailed python or a blood python, make sure it comes from a reputable breeder, it's captive bred, and it's kind of been worked with or you're working with it from a young age because a tiny little pistol bite hurts a lot less than a big pistol bite. Okay, number three, African rock pythons. Now this is the one that I think if I were to get bit by something on the list would be the one I'm least excited about because these are giant animals. We're talking about huge, where are you going? An African rock python can easily get over 15 feet. This is a normal occurrence, not something of an outlier type scale. And even if you get something that is eight foot or 10 foot and as big around as an African rock python, which is the largest snake in Africa, by the way, and it wants to take a stab at you, bad day for you. It's gonna ruin your day. And these guys are known for being cantankerous. And again, I'm gonna beat the same dead horse because it's the same thing with an African rock python. It seems like it's because there's not a lot of captive breeding. And the reason there's not a lot of captive breeding is because who the heck wants a 15 foot snake that wants to bite you all the time, huffing and puffing and blowing your house down. It's just not something I'm interested in, which is why Burmese pythons are my favorite large snake. And I think part of the reason that Burmese pythons have caught on is there was more captive breeding at the beginning, they tamed out really, really quick, and those are kind of the puppy dog of the large snake world. So I would recommend almost 100 times out of 100 uh, to get a Burmese python rather than an African rock python just this for so many reasons, but mostly the fact that African rock pythons are gonna be very difficult to find captive bred. A lot of the times they're imported from Africa where they are from, and an imported animal that is already cantankerous is very difficult to tame down. If you can find one that is captive bred, it'll probably be much more expensive than one that was brought in from the wild, but you can tame it down a little bit easier. But I, I don't know, it just, I can't think of any reason that a normal person who isn't like in love with a species for some weird reason wouldn't just rather have a berm. There's more morphs, which is kind of driving again why there's so much captive breeding. They're easier to find, they're cheaper to find in a lot of cases. There's more uh, care information available. It just It's just a better animal, so. Am I boring you? All right, number two, you knew it had to be on the list. Amazon tree boas. Amazon tree boas are wild. It seems like they just strike and strike and strike and that's all they do when you hold them. But the thing is, a lot of people recommend that you don't hold them and not just because they are going to bite you, likely, very likely anyway, or try to, and they've got a very long strike range, but because they're very delicate. We're talking about a five to seven foot snake that is like pencil thin. Well, not pencil thin, but very thin in comparison, a very slender snake in comparison to most other snakes that are of this length. And it's a completely arboreal snake and they come in beautiful colors. So in my opinion, this is one of the best display snakes if you know how to handle it when you need to clean the enclosure and feed it and things like that. They're beautiful, they're stunning. They actually move around the enclosure quite a bit too. And between a Amazon tree boa and an emerald tree boa, which are similarly related from similar part of the world in South America, the difference is an emerald tree boa will start off these brilliant yellows and oranges and things like that, and they'll kind of fade out to a green. In Amazon tree boa, there's a lot of phases that stay very vibrant into adulthood, so they don't have that kind of color drabbing out that I would call it with an emerald tree boa that does, that doesn't really happen with Amazon tree boas in the same sort of way. I mean, the color might dull out a bit, but you're not losing all the vibrance. This really isn't a snake for most people. If you wanna handle a snake, if you're looking for a snake that you wanna handle, I'll actually say this is one of the worst snakes you could possibly get. Okay, last one, number one, Nile monitors. Now, if you know anything about monitors, you know this one's gonna be on the list. And that's just simply because I usually kinda like take a crap on savanna monitors because they're known to be cantankerous, but you can tame them out and it's a five foot, four foot type lizard that isn't going to uh, destroy you. Where with a Nile monitor, we're talking about a four to seven foot animal, a much larger animal than the savanna, and uh, they're known for being quite cantankerous and being very difficult to tame. How many yawns? Do you wanna go for a nap? We'll go for a nap after this. How ridiculous, like, a golden retriever talking about unfriendly reptiles. 
Now the number one thing, even if you can tame them out, it takes quite a bit of patience and skill. So you, Joe Blow isn't getting one of these at the pet store as their first animal and taming them out like you could with maybe a Borneo short tail or something like that. Are you chewing me now to like really illustrate the point? This is good. We didn't even plan this. But with a Nile monitor, if they chew on you like you saw Stevie just doing, I'd be going to the hospital and also I'd be giving you thumbs up like this. You know, like it would just be not a good time. My point is they can take digits off and they can really, really hurt you if they choose. And not only with their mouth, but with that tail whip because their tail can give you crazy lacerations, can probably even really give you uh, terrible bruising because it's very strong. They're very powerful animals. They're from Africa where life is hard. It's so hard to be a lizard. You have to be able to defend yourself. You have to be able to take down prey items. And I think that is the thing with all these animals is that the, at the end of the day, I mean, although they're in captivity and they have been in captivity for a while, a lot of these don't have a lot of generations of captive breeding and Nile monitors are no, I don't know a single person who's breeding Nile monitors. And that's not to say I'm the authority on knowing people who, I'm just saying I've never even heard of it. So it's very uncommon. I know that some people do it. I'm sure that, you know, your brother's cousin's son breeds Nile monitors in his basement. I'm just saying it is super uncommon. And if you buy a Nile monitor nine times out of 10, it's gonna be something that was brought in, something that's gonna have an attitude and much more difficult to tame out. So if I haven't lost your attention, I've lost her. So let's just wrap this up. What do you think? Do you agree with this list? Is there animals that deserve to be on this list instead? I hope you, you got the takeaway, which is although there are animals that have bad reputations, it doesn't mean that they're bad animals. They're not demons. We shouldn't outlaw having them. It just takes certain type of people and certain type of work in order to uh, solve the problem of their cantankerousness, if that's a word. So. With that said, if you liked the video, please hit like. I'd really appreciate it. Hit subscribe if you don't mind and leave a comment to let me know what video should be next week. It's where I get all the video ideas from. And as always, a special thank you to the Patreon supporters who've been getting blasted with pictures of Stevie for the last like two weeks. And also you get things like discounts on the merch. You get videos early, you get to see sneak peeks, you know about animals in my collection that I don't talk about at all. And for as little as a dollar a month, you can be part of the Patreon supporter club too. And I'd really appreciate it. I just realized there's a hole in my pants from when we were playing earlier. Okay, that's it. Because we do videos twice a week, that means that I'll see you on Monday. You did so good. I am so proud of you. Do you want to go for a little outside time? Go eat some snow? Yeah.